What is up YouTube? It's Kingfisher745. And in this video, we're going to try to start the task list. Now, I'm just going to say right here, the task list has been pretty weird. They don't even show up at times. The numbering is just out of this world and it makes it really difficult to edit. But I'm going to do my best and hopefully explain it enough to help anyone out that's having trouble. Now the first and the second task they give you cannot be completed right now. So when you see this you're kind of like, wait a second, I'm stuck. Usually when you get stuck just start doing a battle in the spec up and then a task will appear after that. What you're going to want to do right away is choose a side. I went with pro predictive. So that's going to be the path we take here. After you do the first battle, which is to fight some isosaurs, it's actually going to count them so we got three of four. But we have to defeat one more to complete apparently task number two of six. So we're going to go back in and fight some more isosaur. And the cool thing about pro predictive is you can use cloak and dagger and iron patriot some very powerful AoE attackers. And I love being able to get through these waves extremely fast. Counterattacks don't hurt either. That's for sure. We should be able to mow through these guys just without any problem whatsoever. And on Cloak and Dagger's turn we'll use a shot in the dark which drops both of the remaining enemies. So final wave already. And we're going to attack the Elder with the Blade of the Guardian then he'll take Absorb Energy Damage and Cloak and Dagger will use Blackout. Now just to let you guys know what's going on, well right now it's raining pretty heavily. But during this week I've had to complete quite a few projects and I got three done already and one paper left to go. So I'm going to hopefully get that done either tonight or tomorrow early. Because it's due tomorrow evening. That's kind of been making it a little bit harder to do stuff like the task list. Especially with all the editing that's needed, but I'm trying my best and after this weekend, I'll be pretty much free for quite a while. Now once you complete this task, you do get 1200 experience and apparently we leveled up. But then we're going to move on to the next task that pops up. Apparently I couldn't find it exactly in all the craziness, but I know it's to use Blue Marvel in combat. So that was the next task they gave us on the pro predictive side. And we had to go all the way to the end boss to find a team up. So that was pretty annoying. Definitely time consuming. And if I had one thing to say about these opening tasks, it's that they are very time consuming. They certainly didn't choose any easy ones early on. Or fast ones. However, the cool thing about this boss fight is we do get to see Blue Marvel in action. And we're going to start with antimatter manipulation which many of you pointed out does heal and his antimatter stacks apparently help for that. They should have told us that but at least now we know. As far as his animations, they're very remindful of Carolina Dean. They even kind of slow down the game and take a while. So I don't know if that's going to get better or if that's just how he is. Besides that, he is a pretty awesome character. I happen to like his look. He always gets antimatter charges. And he is very powerful. I mean, just the fact that he gave us all those finest hour buffs helped out our Blade of the Guardian. And our agent's going to be critting on every attack. That'll certainly help us make quick work of any enemy waves. So look at this Mercurial, for example. It knocks Sauron right out. Now, I was kind of surprised that in the second wave, there's Rescue and Thor Jane Foster to fight, teamed up with High Evolutionary. Honestly, I can't believe heroes would team up with this guy. But it is what it is and at least on Blue Marvel's turn, we're going to see another one of his actions so we'll use his level 1 Antimatter Uppercut. We get a follow up from the Rapier and both Rescue and Jane Foster are at 50% or below. With my agent, we're going to go ahead and heal and shield our team. Then following that, I'm going to use a Chrono Accelerator on Cloak and Dagger. Now they can use Blackout and after hopefully setting up the enemies, we'll try to take them down with a Pitch Black. So far the High Evolutionary attacked Jane and she attacked him. So that was pretty funny. Then with our next action, well maybe we should go with the shot in the dark instead. 
Alright, we're going to go ahead and use that. Cloak and Dagger once again get benefited from Blue Marvel. So that makes their shot in the dark kind of an AoE one-shotter. High Evolutionary, on the other hand, is a little bit more resilient. So after he attacks us, he's going to also do a follow-up, but he will take a pretty big counter-attack. So if we do counter him one more time, he should go down. We have to sit through another two punches. But then a Blade of the Guardian takes him so close to death. But hey, it's close enough for Cloak and Dagger to use their level 1, and that's going to be the end of this task. We've only done like two things, and we're already almost at 5 or 6 minutes into the video. So like I said, this is a painfully long first set of tasks. Hopefully our mission score was okay, but we do get credit, apparently for 1 of 6. So, before the other task. And as far as the boss reward, we get a chance at, well, there's going to be special A ISO on the roulettes. So this one's the Overcharged Augmented ISO 8. Of course, we don't win anything, but they have that and the weapon, which I wouldn't have mind winning either one. For Pro Predictive Justice 3 of 6, you have to defeat Black Panther, and he's the boss of Mission 2. So you have to clear all the way through Mission 2 just to do the next task. Like I said, a very long process for these first tasks. Luckily, we're able to edit most of that out and we're at the boss fight where you have to take on a ton of different heroes. First, there's Scarlet Witch and Hercules. I was surprised by how many heroes we have to face. And by the way, someone pointed out that those that have alternate costumes are wearing them. That's something I didn't notice at all, but I'm going to try to pay attention to now. So there's Scarlet Witch, and she is in her AOU costume. Hercules luckily takes a beating from our counterattacks, and then we're going to go ahead and manipulate antimatter, and then use our level 9 to do some major damage to Scarlet Witch. So here's our antimatter blast. Surprisingly, it takes her about 50%, so not a one shot. But after our first counterattack, she does go down. So we'll just finish off Hercules, and it's on to the next wave. In this boss wave, there's going to be three enemy heroes. Falcon, Quake, and Black Panther are our target. Now, although Shot in the Dark is supposed to do a bunch of damage, survival training ruins it. So yeah, Falcon's extremely annoying in this fight. You'll also notice Black Panther's in his alternate costume. So there it is once again. I know I definitely need to make another video on it. The last one, well, I didn't get to do everything I wanted to do, like show his passive actually proc. So we are going to have another video of him, at least one more, next week. I just can't wait to be done with this semester. The end of it had so many projects, I almost can't believe it. There were multiple due in one class, and that made it even worse. The other thing that's stupid about college is the end projects or finals are worth way more points than just about everything else you did. So it's like the rest of the semester was almost a waste. If you don't do good at the end, then there goes your grade. And that really doesn't even seem fair to me at all. Now I should do fine, but the fact that they're worth 100 points each, so 200 points in this one class, and full tests were only 50 points prior to this, Assignments were only worth 5 points, just to give you an example. So a huge difference. And wow, this Aftershock is absolutely decimating our team. At least we take him down with Pitch Black though. And an Antimatter Blast should end it. Even though we should have healed our team back to full. Truthfully, I just wanted to get done with this fight and get done with the task. So there's number 3. We get 15,000 silver. And we'll also take a quick look at the boss roulette. Then we're going to be getting closer to wrapping this one up, though the next task isn't short either. On this roulette you can win the Actuating A ISO, Equip Single Target Melee Attack Gains Charged Attack. Then it has the Bifurcator which I really don't care about. We end up winning a Vibra Chatel though. Absolutely terrible. Then on to task number 4, you have to fight 5 PvP battles. They couldn't even make it 3, it has to be 5. So we're going to show the last fight we had, and we were actually using Black Panther's ult, so at least we have that. Actually, I just want to correct myself, we're still not going to get the blueprint after this one. 
we're going to have another thing to do. But at least we got some really easy fights, like against just an agent and Craven. So thank you, Agent Zoom. We were using Blade and Black Panther with his ult at the time. So Blade's going to go first. And just watch this. He'll absolutely tear through Craven the Hunter. We'll begin with the Bleeding Edge, and he'll do another Bleeding Edge because of that. Following that, we'll use Dead by Dawn, and he'll get his other follow-up attack. At the end of this, Craven's already knocked out, so time to just focus on the enemy agent. We'll put Despair on him, then we'll let Black Panther have a shot. He'll begin with Combat Claws. Then Blade will do another Dead by Dawn, followed up with Bleeding Edge. And the agent's actually going to go down to dots, so that's the end of this fight. Alright, that means we have task number 4 down, and we got, I believe, 1200 experience. But we need to quickly move on to task number 5. You probably won't believe this because I absolutely did not. But they want us to defeat Iron Man, the boss of Mission 3. So yeah, we have to clear another full mission just to do the next task. Talk about a time sink when I don't have any time because of school. This was absolutely dreadful. Honestly, I have to cut this battle because otherwise we'd be over 20 minutes. Just know it's three waves, extremely long. You start against two heroes, then three Ultron robots. And finally, Iron Man and Hank Pym are teamed up with Ultimate Ultron. So these guys are willing to team up with just about anyone to fight us. Maybe they'll even team up the Red Skull next. I mean, name the most evil villains. Apparently they're willing to do it. By the way though, what's eye-opening is Captain Marvel, of course, is also on pro-predictive justice side. So they had the best heroes by far. At least in my opinion. The bad news is, we're going to have to wait through a lot of turns right after Captain Marvel's done. Hank Pym and Iron Man both get two. Oh, and we end up attacking our own teammates quite a bit. Thankfully, we take down Hank. That way we don't have to go through quite as many enemy turns. Unfortunately, Ultron won't be as easy to take down. Plus, we have to sit through both of Tony's turns. At least his digger missiles miss Captain Marvel though. Now with Cloak and Dagger, we're going to use Child of Light. And then we didn't need to use it, but I also tried Child of Darkness. Too bad they didn't get an opportunity to attack because they probably could have took down Iron Man and severely hurt Ultron. Plus next turn they're going to be out of stamina still. So I guess we're just going to have to use Smothering Shadow. Then the Blade of the Guardian on Iron Man. And instead we hit our own teammate one-shotting her. Now that was bad luck. And it's going to hurt our mission score too. So now we have one character out of stamina. Oh, but at least we do get a counterattack taking down Iron Man. So we'll just recharge with Cloak and Dagger. And we'll see what Ultimate Ultron's going to do on his turn. Well, first he misses Cloak and Dagger. Then on our agent's turn, we'll just use Blade of the Guardian and finish it off. So there it is. Now we're finally done with that last task before we get the blueprint and can move on to the first research. It still says we got perfection, but I'm sure our score was hurt. But here's the blueprint for the Vibranium Mystic Amplifier. And we got 15,000 silver. Moving on to another boss roulette. Hopefully we actually win something good this time. I'm sure there's going to be another custom A-ISO. And there's also the Ultron Arm. The conducting A-ISO says equipped single target electric attack applies ozone. So here goes our spin and we end up winning 20 unstable ISO 8. So not too bad, we will actually take that. Then for the final step of the video, we got task number 2 ready. And that's complete 5 tasks to unlock the blueprint, then research it in the lab. It's going to take 8 hours, 40 unstable ISO 8, and 100 silver. So we'll get that started, and we'll be back with part 2 soon. That's going to be it for this one, but I do want to thank you all for watching. Ask you to please like, comment, and subscribe. Then until next time, good luck, and take care.